few trends in the market, just to set the context, right? Uh, we're in a world where uh, data is everywhere. Um, everyone's familiar with the three Bs, right? Increasing volume, velocity, uh, variety. Uh, more formats, just more data in general, uh, and more speeds at which data is uh, getting generated. Uh, the second thing that we see is, in this world, again, uh, nobody is sticking to a single uh, system of data for managing all of their data, right? Every, no one's just in the cloud, no one's just in a relational database. Uh, so, so data is scattered across many, many locations. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 I don't know, maybe I have to do this and I'll just think. The other thing is uh, we have increasing demand for data, so we are uh, opening up new use cases, IoT, machine learning, etc. Uh, and just in general, technologies are getting advanced as well. They have the capability to handle lots of data, so uh, business users, uh, data scientists, uh, data engineers are requesting for more and more data as we speak, right? Um, <clears throat> so what's happening here? There's a there's a deluge of data. Uh, we predicted that there be 10.7 billion connected devices by 2018, uh, 163 zettabytes of data by 2025. Uh, but but amongst all of this volume, uh, we, we see that today, uh, when you speak of unstructured data, less than 1% of that is being utilized, right? Uh, and, and forget analysis, people don't even have access to this uh, data sometimes, right? Uh, and even when it comes to structured data, we are far ways away from uh, reaching our full potential in terms of getting access to this and making value out of it. So just a lot of data, uh, no sort of way to get access to everything so that you can base your business decisions on it. Right? So what do, what do people say? People say that uh, in this environment, I possibly cannot host all my data in my data center anymore. Cloud is basically a no-brainer. So let me move everything to the cloud. Uh, it's cost effective, it's scalable. I don't have to worry about management. Uh, it's reliable. Uh, and day by day, it's getting secure as well. So, so just you know, why not move to the cloud, right? But the same customer, just five minutes later, a few minutes later, uh, mm -hmm. comes back to reality, right? Where transition is extremely hard, right? I cannot stop all of my processes. These are mission critical applications. Uh, I cannot just stop everything, flip a switch, snap my fingers, and be on the cloud. So how do we uh, then make sense of all of this data across these various environments, right? Uh, and, and just give some more context, just to stress the point that uh, data exists in a lot more locations. Everyone wants to invest heavily in, in public clouds. And there are some figures that uh, indicate that. Uh, but at the same time, no one is ready to switch off their on-premises on environments unless uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a brand new enterprise that's just starting off today. Right? Uh, legacy systems have existed for the longest time. And uh, people are not going to shut that off unless they have a replacement. Uh, and no one can. Uh, there are, these are business critical applications. You cannot just switch uh, one thing off and the other on uh, just to do it. So what do I do? What what uh, what will help me uh, get value out of this data? What will help me get access to all of this data? Uh, how do I build applications that that don't have to worry about getting data first or getting data in a manner in which I'm not doing bad things? Um, so the the solution uh, increasingly is for uh, service providers or platforms or frameworks to stop thinking in terms of or stop asking people to make choices that you can use either technology A or technology B. How about, how about a scenario in which you do not have to worry about where your data is, you just get access to it under a single pane of glass. So it's not a question of whether you need structured data or you need unstructured data, whether your application can process one of these formats, it's a question of give me structured and unstructured. It's not a question of SQL versus no SQL, it's a question of SQL and no SQL. It's not a question of cloud and on-prem or org on-prem. It's a question of you know, uh, cloud and on-prem or, or wherever it is, I expect. So how do we do this? Right? Uh, there are six key 
sort of things, uh, to, to building this uh, a, 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 a service that will get you access to all of this, right? So the first one is it has to be democratic. What I mean by democratic is no matter what kind of a user are, you should have access to this data as long as you're not, uh, as long as it's, uh, you don't have to go to your IT department or an engineer to, to, to write a script for you every single time. Uh, there has to be well-defined processes by which uh, you can get access to data. Uh, discovery has to be easy. You have to be able to build applications in a self-service manner. Right? The second thing is it has to be flexible. Uh, it, it again should not ask those or questions. Uh, it should run wherever. It should be portable. Uh, it should allow you to run in your on-prem world, in your hybrid world, uh, without you having to redo all of this over and over again. Okay? Uh, the third key tenet is unified, where again wherever your data is, from an application's perspective. Why can't you have a single view of, of, of it uh, with, which, which gives you some metadata about it as to where the data is, how do I access it, uh, are there some guardrails against it, uh, without having to actually, actually worry about, hey, this is my Oracle, or this is my Teradata, it's located somewhere, it's this format, and uh, you know, here is, uh, how do I write it, here is a client library, here is the software that I need, etc. Right? Uh, then it has to be secure. Uh, if you're giving access to all of this data, uh, you need some guardrails. You need to know that uh, people do not do, there are no compromises in this world where leaks are everywhere, data being compromised. Uh, when you're giving such a platform, uh, when you have such a strategy, it has to be secure. That has to be the forefront of uh, such a strategy. Uh, it has to be trustworthy. You have to be know, you have to know that, uh, you know, here is a data that I think might work for me. Uh, it has the right quality metrics. Uh, here is how it was exactly generated. Here is its trace. Here is what other data sets were used to make it. Uh, and uh, uh, it's not just random, right? It's not just someone writing a DIY solution, creating a data set, and making it available where there is no one can maintain it tomorrow, for example. And then it has to be reliable, where you, know, you need some guarantees. Uh, it needs to work in public cloud environments. You need some uptime guarantees. And you don't want to build all of this thing into every application. This has to be done with a framework. <clears throat> so what's CDAP? Uh, firstly, it's a project that I work on. Uh, and then uh, it's basically an open source framework for building data analytics applications. Right? So what we mean by that is uh, if you look at your typical uh, application development scenario, uh, you deploy your application somewhere, your data is in some location, <coughs> and your applications and users accessing it are on the top. Your application could be anything. It could be a data integration application, it could be a customer 360, it could be some machine learning, it could be some prediction, uh, it could be some fraud detection, some targeting, PI, it doesn't matter. It needs access to some data, it needs to process it, it needs to get value from that data. <laughs> Data could be located anywhere. It could be a streaming source. It could be a cloud warehouse. It could be an IoT endpoint like MQTT. Uh, it could be an index store. It could be a cloud database. It could be NoSQL. It could be on-prem. It could be your mainframe. It could be your relational database. It doesn't matter. It's data. Uh, it, you need a way to access it in your application. And then all of this could be deployed anywhere, right? It needs to be. It could be in your own premises. It could be in a public cloud, it could be in your own private cloud, right? CDAP is a layer that sits in between all of this infrastructure and your data and your applications on top. And what it provides is an API layer that allows you higher level abstractions that can give you access to data as well as application development APIs. Um, so you don't have to worry about learning each of those technologies, uh, learning exactly how to access each of those data. Uh, it also gives you a runtime, but our focus will be somewhere in the discovery, governance, security, operations sort of area, because this is a data management uh, talk, right? Uh, so it gives you capabilities of uh, as long as you access data through this layer, you get uh, automatic metadata capture, uh, you can search your data sets through there. Uh, as long as data goes through this platform, you can also get governance capabilities like auditing, lineage, uh, both at the data set and the field level. And we'll go into some of those details in the demo. Um, 
It also comes with security integrations, all pluggable. So if you're running in your Hadoop environment, uh, we give you integrations with uh, Sentry, Ranger, etc. If you're running in a cloud environment, we give, give you integrations with IAM uh, and technologies like that. Uh, and if you're running in your uh, on-premises, uh, there are integrations with LDAP, Active Directory, things like that. Right? So uh, we're meeting you where you are. We integrate with all those technologies. And sorry, I'm just uh, sorry. What is uh, what does CDAP stand for? Uh, it it's the data analytics platform. Uh, the C uh, is silent. <laughs> full disclosure: CDAP used to be CAS data application platform, but then CAS got acquired by Google. Uh, so right now we don't want to change the product name. It's CDAP. <laughs> uh, at a point, we decided we'd call it cloud, but no, we were part of it. So, um, so where was I? I was at security, and then you have operations as well, wherein uh, you need APIs, you need uh, CLIs, you need logs, metrics, monitoring, uh, and, and again, if you look at this layer, none of this are services that you want to build in an application. This has to be and must belong in in a framework that. It's used to build, up, build your application. <coughs> cool. So let's jump into the demo. With hands folded. Uh, this is CDAP. Uh, the idea behind CDAP is it is uh, it's completely portable. Uh, in the sense that the same applications that I write and deploy on my laptop can work on a Hadoop cluster, can work in a public cloud, can work somewhere else as long as the framework is deployed. That's the beauty behind having everything go through a, uh, a middleware layer. So um, when you go to CDAP, you have this notion. Sorry. I'm just trying to, I'm sorry. When you get to CDAP, uh, you just hit this home page, there's a a place where you see all your data and all your applications, or pointers to all your data and your applications. Right? Um, it has, a, like I said, an application development framework as well. So you could build your own application using those APIs and then deploy them uh, right in the UI. Right? Applications are packaged as jars, uh, APIs are Java, so anything that uh, is built using the JVM will work. Um, Additionally, uh, there are specific kinds of applications wherein you can, so for example, the, uh, the ones that you're looking at here are, uh, Pipeline is, is a built-in application that allows you to uh, have a visual interface for building data integration pipelines. Uh, Wrangler is for doing something like data preparation and cleansing. Uh, Analytics is a UI-driven machine learning flow. Rules is for doing a business rules engine. But our focus today is around metadata. Right? So let me just show you some example applications first. So I've developed some pipelines that uh, do some data movement, uh, data cleansing, some aggregations, uh, just moving from cloud to on-premises, on-premises to cloud, things like that. Okay? Um, an application typically uh, looks like this, where you drag and drop uh, things on a canvas, and in the background it's doing its work where, uh, so that users do not have to worry about writing that code. Uh, so typical ETL, right? Um, so what we're looking at here is uh, a bunch of advertiser and impressions data getting transformed using uh, the, the data pipeline um, and getting written into some, some destination. <coughs> what is important is while this is happening, uh, since it's going through this framework, the framework captures technical and operational metadata along the way so that it can then trace, hey, this was the exact process through which this, file, this, this data set was generated. Or, hey, uh, since this process went, was captured, sorry, since uh, this technical metadata was captured, uh, you can now search your data using that technical metadata, right? Uh, so let's do some of that. So if you go into the metadata screen, uh, it, it's a simple search interface where uh, I can do prefix searches. So for example, uh, if I search for double, right, it pops up something that seems to match that term. Uh, when you go into it, you're giving 
uh, a view into all the technical metadata that was captured as this data, data set was getting generated. Uh, so for example, it was run using a batch pipeline. Right? It had a schema. These were its fields. Um, this was its schema. Uh, and, and then I can also add some business metadata over here. Right? So for example, I can say that this is my, uh, my uh, web uh, access tracking data set. And when I do this, instantly this data set becomes searchable with, with that information. So I can find that uh, data set, everything that matched over here, and since the web access tracking was there, um, it pulled up that double click data set. Right? So along with the technical metadata, you are also specifying your business level metadata to the data set, and then uh, the, the, the framework indexes that and instantly uh, makes it searchable. The other things that are worthy of note here are uh, lineage. So how was this data generated? This data was generated by a pipeline or a, a application called data pipeline workflow uh, that ran at this time, had the status, uh, and it only ran once for example. Um, it internally read you know, this other data set, which read these other data sets, which, which read these other uh, data sets. So, so as as someone just showing up into this data infrastructure, I get search capabilities. When I searched something, I found a data set, I discovered something, I know exactly how it was generated. So that's the trust factor. Right? Uh, along the way, I can also generate metrics, uh, which gives you the data quality, a sense of quality of this data. Right? Uh, you can also go a little deeper in the lineage, wherein, um, now we're not just talking about the data set at the, at the data set level itself. Uh, here is the fields, or here are the fields in this data set, right? How were they generated? Uh, so if you look at uh, the advertiser ID field, for example, it looks like it was generated using the impressions data set. Right? Uh, the impressions data set internally had these fields offset in quality. <coughs> now how was this generated? What were the operations that were performed? Uh, and what you can see here is uh, a sort of a, an English ledger of exactly the operations that were performed on that input to generate the output. Right? So it seems like there was some parsing, it initially read from Google Cloud Storage, uh, did some parsing, uh, then did some joining, uh, and finally it rolled up into uh, BigQuery. Uh, so if you're looking uh, to build an application for, say, the financial sector, the healthcare sector, right, where uh, tracking is of utmost importance. People need to know, uh, have need to have a sense of uh, data steward uh, who, who, who would come in and who do this audit for the bank, uh, so that all your, you know, PII data, your personal data is very well tracked. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be PII; it's any data can get uh, exact tracking. While the application itself is not focused on any of this, the framework gives this for free. Right? Some other features. Um, I, I talked a little bit about uh, search, but to go into uh, a little bit more detail, right? Um, so let's say I want to find a, I'm looking to run a, a campaign for advertising, and I want to find out a data set that has the field advertiser, right? So how about uh, you know, some some advanced searching capabilities where I say, uh, can I find something that has advertiser? And now you're <coughs> the contextual search where you're, you're not just matching for advertiser occurring anywhere, but it's occurring specifically as a field in a data set. Right? Uh, so I'm looking for some data. Uh, I, I have a sort of a sense of what that field will, will be called. Uh, how do I get it across all of my data systems? Well, I'm not worried here, I'm not ever asking the question of, hey, where is this data located? I'm always focused on, this is my business need, I need a field name uh, advertiser, uh, just give me it, like, give, give that to me, uh, tell me where it is, uh, tell me how do I access it, uh, do not worry about uh, the actual location of the data set. Um, some other uh, fields, right? so uh, one other aspect that I wanted to show was, when you're building an application, 
right? This was the uh, the portion after building the application. Uh, when you're actually building the application, uh, how do they get access to all your data, right? So the, so the, the framework uh, itself allows you uh, a sort of a single pane <coughs> in which you can get all access to all of your data. For example, um, you know, is the data located on my laptop right here, right? Or in some file system, right? or uh, in a HANA uh, database, or in, in a MySQL database, in S3, in some Google storage. Um, the, the, once you've discovered it, we allow you ways to connect to it and build further applications using this. Uh, so, so, so to complete the entire picture of, hey, uh, I know some things about my data, so I know some things about what I want. Give that to me. Uh, then build a story around, hey, how trustworthy is this? Is this good quality data? And then, hey, how do I access it and make it available into my application and build an application on top? Um, so to, to come to that entire story. Um, in terms of operations aspects, uh, give you dashboarding capabilities, et cetera, as to everything that runs through this platform is, is, is tracked, and then uh, you can view what ran when, uh, how, how was it done, were there any delays, uh, did you miss any SLAs for it? Um, I'll sort of stop here, and then we'll do uh, a couple more slides, and then uh, questions. So, Thank you, demo cards. So, so what are some of the key takeaways, right? One is you need flexibility. You don't want uh, to be locked into any one platform, any one uh, for, for even building your applications, running your applications, uh, or even hosting your data, right? You want, you want that flexibility of, uh, hey, I want to build this system once, and I want to run it anywhere, right? Uh, you want freedom of choice. You don't want someone to force a technology choice in you. Uh, just because today you are on some system, uh, you want to take advantage of uh, another set of tools that are available today, you shouldn't have to first migrate to an entire uh, new set of tools. Uh, frameworks should exist that, that allow you, that, that meet you where you are, and allow you access to all your data in a nice governed manner with guardrails, so that uh, you know, you can focus on building those applications. And then uh, the democracy aspect where uh, everything is self-service, you're not going to your IT here. Uh, in this uh, sort of uh, demo that I showed, I don't have to be a hardcore developer to, to find this data. I don't have to be a developer to even build applications, uh, or I, I don't even have to be a developer unless I want to. Uh, I have a specific need, well then we give you APIs. Uh, but otherwise, I can stay in the UI, uh, I'm not forcing a big learning curve on you, uh, but you're getting access to all your data. Cool. Uh, so some questions, some things about the community. Uh, we're located at uh, cdap.io, that's our website. Uh, CDAP user is uh, a vibrant community, uh, growing every day, uh, please feel to try, try it out. Uh, we are on Twitter at uh, CDAP.io, uh, and we are absolutely excited to welcome any contributions. So uh, the GitHub organization is CDAP.io. Uh, check it out. Uh, simple to get started right on your laptop as well. Uh, and let us know how we can help you. And then a slight announcement, sorry for this, but uh, on Google today, uh, Google Cloud uh, at next in the keynote today, we just announced uh, a managed service that uses CDAP uh, as its uh, at, at its core and sort of provides a, uh, a fully managed data integration service uh, for you to build data pipelines uh, on a drag and drop UI on um, on, on GCP now. So uh, feel free to check it out. Uh, if you are on GCP already, you should see that service in the big data section. Um, and let us know how. It Cool. I'm open for questions. You said that. Hold on a second. Hold on. Here's my. You said that it's um, on GitHub and it's open source. What is it written in? Uh, it's Java. Uh, it's sort of. Uh, we began around seven or so years ago, uh, and Hadoop uh, 
and Spark ecosystem for people that are kind of JVM seemed to be a platform of choice across the board. So that was uh, the reason for choosing that. Uh, my question is how the metadata is stored in the background. So uh, I may I may notice that you in your query it says schema column advertiser. A schema is kind of like a, an entity. Uh, so I may think of is it in the graph database? If not, if not, is it like in Druid as such kind of a dynamic database or else? So, so we had started off initially with doing um, storing all our metadata in HBase because we were uh, very tight to Hadoop. Um, so so the, the capabilities that we were using were uh, prefix matching in HBase. Um, but uh, off late, we've had a slight re-architecture of the platform to, to sort of decouple us from Hadoop uh, and so make it available in the cloud uh, where Hadoop may or may not be available, right? Uh, so now it is stored in a combination of a relational database as well as uh, you, know, you could also plug in uh, an index store like uh, an elastic search. Right? So uh, even that layer is completely pluggable. Uh, you could write an extension that tomorrow stores it into some other Tool of choices. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 coexist. Exist. They are uh, they are independent services. Uh, they're completely independent services. Uh, okay. They're meant for different uh, purposes. Uh, cloud data prep is for. Uh, Preparation, cleansing, uh, wrangling, etc. Uh, whereas uh, Cloud Data Fusion takes you through the entire ETL journey uh, with operationalization, with metadata management, uh, etc. As well. I'm happy to add more color after this. Question from the other room. Question from this room. All right. Last question for. If I understand correctly, can uh, you're pulling from databases that are known? Can I pull from sensors I have in the field live data streaming? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And can I tune the uh, searches for various languages or keywords? Sorry. Uh, can I tune the searches for various keywords as well as various languages? What do you mean by languages? Well, I've got data coming from Germany. I've got data coming from France. Oh. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. I'm not sure. And I can also build in my own APIs. Yes. Yes. So uh, in terms of real time, uh, like I said, I, I showed some use cases where it was used for batch, right? But uh, the, the framework itself is a general, generic uh, data application development framework. So that application could be batch, could be real time, could use Spark streaming, could use Spark app reduce, it's whatever you want. I mean, the choice is up to you. Let's give a quick applause to uh, our first speaker.